Hello, everybody. It's Meredith. I'm at the top here. Welcome to the Change Maker Summit. And uh, today, my guest is Merle, and she's a wonderful lady. And I know you're going to learn lots from her. So take it away. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a wonderful platform and experience that you're creating. And to be a part of it is, is really an honor. So my name is Meryl Gilbert. I am the co-founder of Curious Futures. That seems like just some strange name. But what it is, is we really um, work with a lot of entrepreneurial founders. And we work with a lot of investors. And that is in the CPG space, in the cannabis space, in the food tech space, technology, basically anything you want to, you know, grow, put on a, put in a box, put on a shelf, put it on a plate, anywhere along that. That is a lot of the work that we do. But more importantly, we really um, help founders identify where they want to create. Um, their companies, how to grow their companies and expand that. And when they are thinking about or the need to grow and look for outside funding, we really take them through that funding readiness of understanding how to build relationships and find the right investor or the right type of funding that they require. Where is that funding going to go? And then how to tell that story in a very impactful way. So when you and I got together to talk about what it is that I can bring to this conversation, I really felt like our topic really should focus on what it means to be an innovator, a disruptor, or a refiner, and really the adventures of being an entrepreneur. So that is what um, I'm going to try to cover in this period of time that we have carved out for today. Um, you know, number one is what does that mean to be an innovator? disruptor or refiner and in the lens that i'm going to be talking to about this is really defining where you want to be or the type of company that you are trying to develop and innovation you know when we think about that the number one you know most current way to look at that is let's think back to the beginning of a pre-iphone um, but when we first, you know, had Steve Jobs standing up there going, you know what, I'm going to be able to put all your music anywhere you want it. And then taking that idea from the first, you know, part of that into what we now carry in our hands, doesn't matter which brand you're using, but in our hands, we have the most powerful computers that we have all of our music, that we are able to capture the most incredible moments of our lives. And that we're able to, you know, reference our information, present from our information, develop, search, all of those things are now held. But the initial part of that is all innovation. An idea, a concept that has not been heard of or seen or done before. And so when you put that in this, the light of you as an entrepreneur and what you're trying to create, that is where that innovation is. Is this something that has not been seen before? Is this something that is unique? Is this something that has intellectual properties to it that you can you know, patent? And that is one way to think about your business and what you're going to develop over time and grow over time. When we talk about a disruptor, that is taking something that's already out there and making it into something else, right? And that is really coming impactfully into an area. So where we're seeing a disruptive is AI, right? We've been hinting at it. We've been using it probably more than we've been aware of for a number of years, autocorrect in our um, text messages, um, finishing our sentences. But disrupting is a, absolute something that will change how business or how we do things in an everyday way. And that's where AI is, is, a, is considered. And that's how I want you to kind of think about when you disrupt something, right? It's something that has, you know, not been done in a way that is going to create some form of fundamental change. Refining is really taking something and just making it better. So in a simple way to see that is, um, again, the iterations of these phones over time, right? So they went from simple, just phones, to maybe having our music and being able to capture pictures to now being this, you know, fully 
integrated differentiation on a shelf and you can pick and choose you know what the best um, plan is but it's really being able to stand out already in a category that exists and really having a point of differentiation that makes it better or more than whatever's been out there right so we always want to be equal or better than what else is, is in the marketplace so the part of that that goes from one of those defining what that is and the other part of being an entrepreneur is deciding if you're going to be a marketer or a manufacturer this is this is common knowledge meaning am i going to make every single thing that i create am i going to own everything that i create am i going to hold on to that or am i going to find somebody or someplace that can produce that product to my specifications in a way that i have control over but I'm giving up a big part of that because I'm going to just be selling it and marketing it. And somebody else is really actually going to be holding the actual end product, right? What comes out. And so those are things you have to think of early on as you're going through this ideation phase of what you're trying to create, because initially you're probably going to want to hold on to that, you know, in that trial, is this real? Is this a hobby? Is this a real business? You know, we all hear about, oh, it's my side hustle and now it's my business. But, you know, before you quit the day job, you really need to have some trial. And so part of that is the experimentation, being crafty and making a little bit of it yourself, giving it to your friends and family, expanding from friends and family to maybe the, your coworkers. And then it's maybe going, you know, out to a, a place that potentially might sell that product and saying, hey, would you mind if I'm here on a Saturday afternoon and just see if you know anyone likes this? Or would you even buy it, right? So getting that trial. And getting from that trial is then the next stage of, from the trial, now I need to make this a little bit more real. So now I have to make more of that. And through that, you're really not only testing, but you're learning. You're learning what things cost. You're learning what it, time it takes to produce. You're learning about ingredients and learning about marketing strategies. And all of that information starts to build the foundation for the company that's going to follow and be forward in the future. So these stages of identifying all these aspects of the business become really crucial as you are taking ideas and transforming them into actions, clarifying what this business is about, validating that there's a business there, understanding where this fits in the marketplace. If it's innovative, remember, not been seen before. If it is disruptive, completely changing the way behavior is and how people would look at this or something that's, you know, equal or better to something out there. And how does that stack up in desire of somebody not only buying it once, but buying it again? So now that you get this foundational piece out and now you really like, oh, Voila, people love this. They want it. Now I really have to build it. What happens to that next is, um, can you do that on your own, right? So remember, do I need a co-packer? Somebody else that's going to produce this? Am I doing this myself? Where am I going to do this? All of those things, now that you've gone through that trial and error, that testing phase, that prototype phase, how much money do you need to get there? Can you self-fund this? Can you go to that you know, next stage of funding is, hey, friends and family, I kind of, you know, got this idea and you've liked it. And now I'm really, you know, I've got a few places that are interested in buying it. And now I just need to produce it. And I, you know, are you willing to give me something towards this? And the nice part about friends and family is, yes, even though it could be awkward, you know, down the road, if it doesn't work out at family gatherings and weddings and everything else where you show up, um, they're forgiving because they're they're really investing in you and the belief about you. And so that, you know, stage really takes you into that next part of building this new business that you're creating. And it helps you identify, again, what's working, what's not working, and getting you established. Once you're through that and you really now, there is an interest and you really have to grow, then we talk about that next phase of angels, right? So you go to the rich people you know and say, hey, you know, look, I've proven this. I've got some interest. I'm ready for the next thing. Would you consider, you know, looking at my business? 
thinking about what I'm doing, knowing my experience. And even if I don't have the experience, look at all the advisors and the people that I've gathered with me that are really on board to help me. Would you be interested or know somebody that's interested in giving me these dollars to get me to this next point? And so those angels are out there or, you know, before you even need this product, let's say you have a great social entity and you're well known and you've got thousands of people that are interested in you. Maybe you've been a chef in a restaurant and you're looking to make a product. Maybe, you know, you've just been a social media darling talking about, um, you know, the cosmetics that you like and that, you know, now you're experimenting with some other things. That following can also now be your community. They can also be part of that. You know, we talk about crowdfunding, but the only way crowdfunding really works is you've got to have enough of a following and enough of an interest for people to kind of be willing to give you 50, 100, $1,000. There's usually, you know, some kind of, hey, I get the gift box with all your cool new products. Um, those things, you know, are that crowdfunding piece of that. That's the community you live in. Those are the people that know you that also, you know, but all of that is still investing in you first. And secondly, your ability to communicate that this is a real business and there is a growth strategy. There's a place for profitability. It is, you know, got some real significant um, impact in the marketplace and there's a desire for that, right? And that you have a business understanding or at least surrounded yourself with enough people that understand that business that can get you to that next level. Once we, you know, are at this and once you're really established and there's real money in there, then, you know, there's a couple other things too that I, from that community angel world is also, you know, we talk a little bit about grants and right now um, a lot of, of cities still have funding that they have either left over from the COVID um, funds that they received, or they're really trying to establish and bring in, you know, businesses back into their area. San Francisco is a good example of that. We have a lot of um, community funding out there that's trying to, to bring people back into the city to, to do their work, to build their companies, um, to manufacture, to uh, build food service, uh, whatever the, the realm is, there, there's a lot of interest in that. And there's a lot of money for that. USDA has money, you know, for CPG companies, et cetera, that you don't really normally think of. So, or research, you know, hey, I'm creating something, um, you know, we, we see a lot right now in, in um, healthcare and particularly for women. And so, you know, research into that and supplements and products. So, you know, you have to think a little outside of the box when we're thinking about growing the companies that we're building for the future. When we get you know, into the VC terms, they don't really apply outside of technology. They were kind of the norm for a lot of the years recently. Um, we are finding though in the real world in particularly the consumer products world and the food world that it's really hard to use those models and that it needs to be much more structured to smaller businesses. And it also, it doesn't work well at all for underserved communities and people of color and particularly women, all shape, sizes, ages, and um, ethnicities. It's just, they're being left behind. And the only way, you know, we know that they are way better to invest in and that they will deliver the return on the investment um, way faster, but they still are being, you know, excluded from a lot of traditional funding. So these alternative funding methodologies, crowdfunding, um, inventory, all those, you know, we're looking at new models and we're looking also at specialists. There's, you know, again, specialized funding and groups of impact investors that are really geared towards this. So again, you're just to repeat this, I'm innovative, I am disrupting, I'm refining, I am really looking at the future. I've got a product, I've got some traction on that product, I've got some business acumen, I've got some return on that. I'm, you know, I'm on a gr growth path. I do know that I'll get to profitability in a certain amount of time and I need funds for a variety of things to get me there. And if I can communicate that and get you to understand my enthusiasm, my belief, my values, and show you that I can actually manage this money or have the team that can do it, the doors open, they do not close. And so those kinds of things of, of telling the story and then 
other ways of building relationships, right? Because that's, you know, business is, entrepreneurship is kind of lonely. It takes, a, it's not for everybody. If you like security and knowing that your paycheck's coming, this is not a road that I recommend going down because there's a lot of highs and lows. The great news is it's a really welcoming community. And there is a lot of, of ways to come together these days that you can find support and knowledge and information, different organizations. So depending on what your industry is, there's ways to connect to that. There's ways to look for partnerships. Let's say, again, you're you know a chef in a restaurant, maybe one of your ingredient suppliers wants to partner up because they see the value of this and they get their name out there and they get their opportunities to create that. We also... Um, Again, start building relationships because you don't know who those future people that will invest in your company will be or that future buyer. And so getting out and being present and, and being able to tell these stories and keeping track of that and starting to communicate becomes a really invaluable tool over time. Because just if somebody says no today does not mean they won't say yes later down the road or introduce you to other people. You don't ever go to people and say, hey, invest in me, you always start with a relationship, right? You want to establish that. I know that you've invested in companies like mine before. Can I tell you about what I'm trying to do? Would you have a few minutes for me to do that? And then creating that narrative that's ongoing and keeping track of those people. And then every once in a while, you know, sending a message going, hey, you know, do you remember me? Here's what I've done so far. I'd just love to tell you an update. Happy to jump on a call and, and tell you more, right? Learning how to communicate, building these relationships, telling people what you're doing, asking for help, finding your tribe, all of these things really are how we need to do business today and really grow into whatever our economic and social economic world is going to be. But it only happens in this ability to really put yourself out there, understand what you're trying to do, test it validate it, prove it, and then be willing to tell your story anywhere, anytime, anyhow. Um, it is a lot of what these collaborations do. And then, you know, just building from these learnings, continually building that narrative of what you want to be known for, what you want the company to be known for, and how you want the people that work with you to feel about being in that right? We want, you know, there is a tight labor pool out there. And people, you know, want to work where they are challenged and respected. So bring them into the journey, let them help you. And again, looking, you know, always, you know, try to hire people that are equal or better that because they're going to bring you a richness and um, a challenge. But also be aware that there's lots of people that are just starting out too. And they can also bring, you know, the opportunities of their enthusiasm and their growth. And even though they might not stay with you forever, together you really get opportunities of learning and, and doing and being a part of something bigger than yourself. Thank you so much, Merle. I was just listening to you and I'm going like, oh, wow. I said, and it is so true, you know, when you talk about building relationships with people, you know, you may not understand them, but you just, you have to build the relationships before anything goes. And that's what they're talking about. The new business model now is trust, right? So if you have those relationships, then trust grows, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. So Merle, um, you're going to be um, sharing, um, I guess if they want to work with you, the link uh, will be below the video where you can click and book appointment with Merle and get some ideas or talk with her about your project that you'd like to see if she can help you through. And then um, she's also got a, a tip sheet, what investors want to know from you. So uh, before they'll even consider it. So it's a really good idea to get that and be able to fill it out and then um, reach out to Merle later. Is there anything else you want to say, Merle, before we close off? Um I just, yeah, thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. That, that's really important. Please take advantage of that link. You know, it goes directly to my calendar. We spend 20 minutes. I get to know you. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm really good at, if I don't know the answer, 
I have a pretty extensive network and I love sharing resources with people. The 15 um, questions are a great lead into when you think about what I might need to do. Um, I don't think we have a link to it, but we also have a online class that takes you through the three pitch decks you may um, need to create and have ready, meaning a one pager that mm -hmm. you can send anybody. It just quickly sums up who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it. And the second is for in person. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, timed, you, you build it so you create it in, in for whatever audience for one to three minutes. And then the last one is something you would email. But what's really great in there is it's kind of a do it yourself and it's a little better than Googling or getting a template yeah. because it really forces you to ask those questions of what am I creating here? Right. Why am I different than anybody else? Why would anybody want to buy this? Um, how are they going to, you know, how am I going to produce it? And right. how am I going to tell people about it? So, right. yeah, yeah, that's always the important thing, the marketing part of it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much, Merle, for being on the call today. And uh, we'll talk with you very soon. Thank you. All right, Lynn. Thank you. You're welcome. So welcome.